Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to uh, Ladies Night. And uh, hi, Debbie and Andrea. Hello. Hi, Kim. Hi, hi Andrea. Hi, <laughs> Andrea. <Monday. laughs> Happy Monday. How was your guys' Happy Monday? Happy Monday. Good. Busy. So far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. I always um, look forward to tonight. So, or, you know, this, this okay. broadcast. Yeah. So I was really excited to do this. We have three very interesting ladies again. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to, I do want to, if, if it's okay with you guys, just real quick um, from the broadcast last night, I just wanted to thank a few people. Is that okay? That I forgot mm -hmm. to, <laughs> or that I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the information. Um, I just wanted to thank Andia, uh, Andia, <laughs> Adam, <laughs> <laughs> or Andia, whatever. Adam. <laughs> I, I wonder. If, I wonder how Adam would feel about being called Andia. I, I'll, I'll ask him. I'll, okay. I'll just change his name. I'll just start calling yeah. him Andia. Andia. Um, I wanted to thank Adam, uh, Lucien, and Bonnie for um, controlling the chat and being out there doing the moderating last night. I really, really appreciate it. It was a big job. So. Um, three powerhouses to do that. Thank you so much. I also really quick wanted to just thank the people who donated last night who I did not get a chance to thank. Um, Karen Convoy, Susan Owens, and Anna Olivi, um, Jennifer Russell, Lynn McGlare, Biophysical 39, Love Peace, Deborah Gr Grisk, um, Grisky, Spiritual Growth Tarot, Suzanne Fortyth, Rhonda Bryant, Vivian C, Astrid Hamilton, Marty Gangora, <laughs> Catherine Bush, Cheryl McLemore, um, Susan Montez, and Mystery to Me Too. Thank you so much. We will. I'm going to um, hand it over to some. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of different um, groups that work on police reform, and so I'm going to give it to that cause since that's what you're talking about last night or you know what kind of spurred this on that event on so thank you and thank you ladies also for participating i just really want to say thank you and appreciate appreciate it and thank you and for you're making welcome. it happen yeah. you're welcome very yeah. happy to do it okay so who's first i think our is it we're confused tonight, everybody, because we, we are confused. Um, because why <laughs> did we not start with E? <laughs> I think you are first, Andrea. So yeah, we all start. They all start with te technically start with E. So I think you're first, Andrea. I think it's funny. It is funny. <laughs> it is funny. We're in uh, synchronicity for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay, so I'm pretty excited about my pick. Her name is Edith Monsieur. And she was born in 1890. Oh, look at Kim. Whoa. Wait, wait. I'm getting fancy. Wait, wait. Banners going. Wait, wait. Hold up. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Look at, hey, look at me. Look at me go. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Edith Monture, I sure hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Uh, she is Canadian. She was born on the Six Nations Reserve in, uh, I probably won't say this right now, I'll try, Oweskin. It's near Brantford, Ontario, and she is of um, Mohawk descent. So she's got a few um, not notable things to her career here. She was the first, now they called it Indigenous on the website that I was reading, it's now referred as First Nations. That's the preferred term. Oh, indigenous. So I'm going to use First Nations, and I hope that's okay, okay mm -hmm. in the in the right way to do it. So she was the the first First Nations woman to become a registered nurse in Canada. So that was in 1914 at the age of 24. She was also the first First Nations woman to gain the right to vote in a federal election. And the reason she was allowed to vote is because she was a registered nurse in the war. So that was the loophole where she- Oh, could. interesting, uh-huh. Yeah. And she was the first uh, First Nations woman from Canada to serve in the US military. Now, how come she was serving in the US military? 
Well, unfortunately in Canada, um, furthering education for First Nations people was not allowed. That was not happening at that certain time. So everywhere she applied to, to be a nurse, she was rejected or didn't hear anything back, nothing. She saw an ad um, for New York, which isn't too far from where she would have been living, like travel wise, um, in New York. And she applied and she got in. Not only did she get in, she graduated top of her class. Wow. wow. She became a registered nurse uh, at the age of 24. Then World War I broke out and she um, volunteered to go serve overseas um, in the U.S. Army Nurses Corps. So she was one of the first, she was one of the first, first of many things. So very few wow. um, in, um, Indigenous First Nations women went overseas and she was the first Canadian female to ever serve in the United States military or United States Army. Wow. So okay. she broke tons of barriers for Indigenous First Nations women uh, with being in the armed forces, for being able to vote. Uh, what else do we have here? She was very gifted. Like, like you said, she got first in her class, very smart. Um, when she was in the uh, army overseas, she kept a diary, a journal, which was forbidden. You weren't supposed to do that. And when she passed away, her family found this diary she had kept while she was in. And she was deep in it. She was in France. The battles would happen. And then they, those nurses would have to go right to the field, like right after it happened. You know, it would be destruction. And, you know, can imagine the poor soldiers and have to help them. So she kept track of everything. There's a lovely story in it where she was, um, she felt like an older sister to one of the, one of the soldiers she was taking care of. And there's, it's a lovely story if you guys want to check it out, but her family didn't know any of this until she passed and they found her diaries. Mm -hmm. So I love that she uh, kept yeah. stories that no one would have heard of or, or understood um, from her point of view as a young woman on the field. Hmm. And when she came back, she got married, um, they had children. She advocated for better health care for all of the First Nations people. In 1939, she was elected honorary president of the Awashka Red Cross, and I hope I said that right. Um, and she also worked as a nurse and a midwife until she retired. And I'm happy to say that she passed away in 1996, just a few days shy of her 106th birthday. Oh and my gosh. A wow. beautiful life. Wow. wow. Passed away with, with her family uh, on the Six Nations uh, Reserve. Um, it's a lovely story. This, this woman, I've never even heard of her before. And I found her today because I was looking for someone interesting to read on. Not that they're not all interesting, but someone right. who I didn't know about. Right. And um, so in 1917, she was granted the, the right to vote in Canada in a federal election because she served in the war. There was a loophole where she could vote. 1917, okay? In 1960 is when other First Nations people could vote. 60. Wow. So quite... Wow quite a few decades because I guess they, they could, if they did vote before that, they were um, years later. Yeah. They were banned from their tribes or their, their band memberships were taken away if they did vote. So this, this oh. 1960s act allowed them to vote and still stay within their communities. Um, not, and in 1960, when they were able to vote, she opened her house and it served as a polling station. <laughs> she believed in all that. She wanted them to vote. She wanted them to have a say in the country. So a very interesting woman, Edith Muncher, 1890 to 1996, a woman of many firsts. And she faced a lot of discrimination when she was trying to get education and go to school. 
right? She had so much so that she had to go to another country, States, to get her nursing degree. Um, but I just feel like there's just a lot of drive in her to, to keep going, right? And then to be the best in her class. <laughs> right. right. And then volunteer to go be on the field in the in the war. That is yeah. just, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. And she seemed, they said she's always nice. She didn't really talk about too many things when she came back. She, you know, the war was an awful thing and all the things she saw, she didn't, and she didn't, they said she that her children said that she would be like shy and kind of embarrassed or very humbled to find out that she got all these accolades and is famous, you know, um, posthumously. Does that make sense to her? What, what she like is trying to take not have not me look at her, she wants to show me something else. Like, yeah. she's like, Well, look at the <laughs> she's like, Look over here. So that makes sense to that. Yeah, she wasn't boastful or anything like that. Very humble, mm -hmm. very humble. And I thought, what a wonderful woman. I, I really sense that she was a woman of her word as well. Um, if if she gave her word, whether it was to herself, I'm going to become a nurse, or if she gave her word to whatever it was, um, she she stood she oh okay made yes. that happen oh yeah in her military attire woman of her word that is what i keep hearing um, so if anybody knows her and knows where that lands let me yeah. know but it keeps coming up um yeah if you had her word it was it was solid done, yeah. solid well, the, yeah, the story, I've got goosebumps, the story about the young man in the army, she she thought they were saving him. And she had to take care of him, I think, both his arms were missing. That's been awful. And they thought they had, she had personally, you know, clogged or whatever the problem was with him, had tried to save him. But he passed, and she was devastated. She cried, apparently, mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. And then she... Um, started up a relationship with her, his parents who lived in the States and she eventually went to see them and they went, they came and saw her. So like what, I think that's what you're saying. Like she's a person of her work mm. she meant things she cared. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So interesting. And uh, uh, just a shout out to nurses. I think uh, being a, having the call to be a nurse is, pretty incredible and I I feel that in her it was just like she just had to be Oshwigan Reserve thank you Karen near Brantford Oshwigan um, now she says now the First Nation people can be educated in Canada free mm -hmm. beautiful Very in tune with nature, nurturing. She got, oh, she felt life was very sacred. I think that was part of her nurse calling to save mm -hmm. people, right? Yeah. The importance of life. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so, oh, okay, you go. Yeah. Right? Like very nature, very loving. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Oh, beautiful you know, Mother Earth kind of thing. Those Maybe. are beautiful cards, Andrea. I know inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> inquiring minds will find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she keeps uh, calling me over to show, and, and then I go over and I'm looking in a, a mass hole of some sort and she's crying. Um, do you do you know That's the connection? Probably, I'm, I'm going to guess the um, graves of all the children that were discovered um, at the schools. I, I, I can't remember the name of the schools. Sorry, I'm sure someone in the chat will. Lots of children went missing. First right, Nation right. children went missing. So they were taken from their families, put in these schools to, you know, whitewash okay. them. And oh. quite a few of them 
just disappeared and they've been uncovering the graves. Um, yes, I heard about that, but I just assumed she was being a nurse somewhere else, but this it might be, it could be something else. I, I, I think you, you could be right because she's, um, I feel like she's, um, Is it in the war? Okay, let me work on this for a second. Okay. Um, no, but this is part of what uh, she, um, something about uncovering this and there's more to uncover. Not, yeah. not like, the, uh, she's not trying to say, you know, you know, and there may be, more to find, but um, this needs to completely be uncovered. She, this is she's so glad that you picked her well, <laughs> um, because um, she wants a platform to talk about this. Um, there, this, um, the layers of this. There's layers of it needs to continue to um, uh, never be covered up again. And um, I, I feel like what she's saying with this is that as it's continue to, to speak about it, uncover this, don't let it be, don't let anything be covered up. Because as that happens, literally, um, I see the spirits rising. Yeah. Like it, it's going to allow this release um, as the truth and, yes. and the injustice yes. is being um, yes. spoken and just kind of continuing of that uh, apology. You know what I mean? Like it, that whole connection, it, it's not a mistake that you um, chose her today. Uh, she says it's important. What we do here really is important on the other side is too. Everything's connected, she says. Mm -hmm. I'm getting all shaky. Yeah. Well, you know, all those voices that were silenced and hidden are not going to be anymore because we're not going to stand for it as a country. And I know in, in America as well, like, no more. Like, the First Nations voices have to be heard and the, the atrocity, atrocities that they face and face. She says, just know that what, what we're doing here um, is connected to a release on the other side mm -hmm. as well. So I literally see, she's showing me, look, and I see literally spirits rising, you know, it, it's a symbol, mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. they don't, yeah. they just, but um, the symbolic of that, symbolism of that is like rising up out of the ashes, out of the graves. Mm -hmm. So okay. She's I'm, totally focused on that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, go ahead, Kim. I, I was just going to say, I'm getting that she, um, could, um, I do feel, I, um, I do feel like she's a little, um, uh, like listing her accomplishments. She is a little embarrassed, yeah. um, but she's very, she considers herself a nurse first. That's her, like, that was her, she feels like she was called to do that first or something. Um, but she feels very much in solidarity with the nurses today. And there, she's saying it is it, even though it's not technically a war, it is like a war because people are divided and, and the, the, um, the, 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 to me, it feels like, uh, choose a side, choose a side. Um, there, there's this cut, tug of war going on and um, that they're working in this atmosphere. Um, but she feels very much, very uh, like she's ha uh, trying to give them strength. Um, she's worried though. I, I feel like she's a little bit, um, and she's going like this. I think she's worried about their, their mindset and the way they're emotionally handling this and taking this. Um, uh, she's like, it's a different kind of, um, it's so personal, the losses. And I think that goes back to the story you told Andrea about her feeling that personal 
that loss of a patient so personally. And she's saying this is so it's happening like day after day after day. It's so oh. hard. Emotionally. She's worried about their yeah. the mental yes. um, toll that it's taking on on nurses right right now and um, the medical field. But she's very much like I'm there. I'm 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 assisting. I'm doing what what I what I can. Um, but it's sad. It's very sad. She's. It makes her. It's. It's hard to to um, witness um, what's going on. The, she also mentions voting too. Voting came in right. The, how important it is. Um, it's our voice. She's saying it's our voice. Um, don't do whatever you have to to get your voice your voice heard. Your vote cast. Um, whatever that is, you, you have to do it because that's the only say you have. And she's saying like that, it's it's that ripple effect of you get the wrong people in there. It it can just affect so many other things. So um, protect that right to vote and do it. If you have, if you do whatever you have to, to get out there to, to, to uh, let your voice be heard. Um, and she feels very connected to you, Andrea. She considers you a healer. Cool. She considers you a healer um, of the heart, a healer of the heart. Oh. She considers you a healer of the heart. It's amazing. When I was looking at her photos, she looks identical to one of my best friends in my uh, 20s, early 30s. Oh, She's nice. still today, but, you know, obviously, you're not as close as you were when you were younger mm -hmm. due to everything. But uh, she... I was so drawn to her photo. I'm like, she looks exactly like my friend Vera. <laughs> wow, oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, healing, you know, and I think about nurses. I'm sure we all know a nurse or related to one. I, I know I am. And their job is so stressful. It, we think about un, unbelievable things like going through a war or like today with the, with the virus. And what the nurses and doctors, what we're talking about nurses right now, the stress right. and the drama. And I mean, these are real people, you know, they have every feeling we have and they've got to right. deal with all of this. Like, I don't have to deal with that when I go to work. So I'm pretty right. lucky. So I'm very grateful for nurses. Oh my goodness. I, you know, yeah, true heroes, superheroes, Lucien. Yeah, it's very, you know, working in the medical field, working in the ER for as long as I did and the hospitals for as long as I did. Um, it is a really thankless job for them. Um, they're beat up all the time. I mean, sometimes physically, but I mean, verbally, I mean, thankless. I mean, you, of course, uh, from, uh, you don't, you don't. You don't go to the ER when it, when you want to party, right? You know what I mean? You go to the ER because there's something going on with your body. You're scared, you know, all these things. But you also, you get people at the at the worst of themselves. Yeah. And um, they take it out on the nurses. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's no one said, I mean, sometimes you will get people, of course. Thank you so much. Um, you were very helpful. Thank you for taking care of me and like that. And But in general, it's... A thankless job and you're beat up all the time and just and you adding, go in every day to save and help people and yeah, you're really really a superhero really. yeah and you're there just to yeah save and help people uh, that's what you want to do and that's uh, and <laughs> it's like it's tough you guys right and the nurses here know yes yeah. yes and Fifty Shades was saying they're earth angels. They really are. They're, they they yeah. are angels on earth, especially especially now. I mean, because when you when you your whole thing about going into the medical field is to try to save people, right? Try to fix them, try to save them. And with so much loss, I can't imagine how. Yeah, they're they're dealing with this. So yeah, yeah. bless them. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you, nurses. Thank, Thank you, you, nurses. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's lovely. To, her, her energy is very gentle, um, mm -hmm. very humbling. And, it, and, and I'm, I just love that she was um, a role model and is a role model. Mm -hmm. And what you can, what you can and can. So I guess some of 
when she applied to New York, someone said, why did you do that? She said, I had nothing to lose. So everywhere in Canada wouldn't take her. She had nothing to lose by applying to the school in New York. So she, I love that she stepped up to that because some people just wouldn't do it, right? You just would give up. Mm -hmm. But she thought, I have nothing to lose. Of course, I will apply. And now, I love that she got in and was the best in her class, like top marks. <laughs> so I she know. was made for this and to think that, you know, she almost didn't get in because mm -hmm. of stupidity in the past. Mm -hmm. She did. And she didn't want it. anybody to question her um, ability to, or question her ability to be there. Yeah. Um, so she had to be the best. She had to be, had to get those highest marks. Mm -hmm. She wanted there to be no question. Right. And um, so. And it also shows don't give up. Like an entire country told her no. So she just went to another <laughs> one. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. You know? insurmountable odds, but you just keep pushing through. And she loved nursing. She loved it. Right. That's it. Yeah. When you're called to do something, that's what, you know, you do it. You too, or you, yeah, you find a way to do it. Um, yeah. Very good. Very, very good pick, Andrea. Yeah, I just got inspired warrior. So I think we know who we're talking oh about. Oh my goodness. That is so perfect, perfect for her. Perfect for her. So absolutely. Inspired yeah. and a warrior. A warrior for women, a warrior for First Nations women. Um wow. Thank you, Edith. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And she said, you know, you are all special. She's like, you know, like we said she's like not yeah, wanting to be just, she just take this but we are all special we are all pioneers we all have our own paths our own journeys to press through so she's um like wanting to fire us all up in our own in our own spaces and what we're doing get so, inspired yeah. oh there you go become an inspired warrior right <laughs> yes yep yep <laughs> yeah Great what pick. a beautiful soul. Yeah. Really, yeah. really lovely. Yes. Well, thank you, Edith. Thank you, Edith. So, so Debbie, like, Debbie, you have your... Up, right? It, we always encourage you guys to look up all the people we read on as well. Yeah. To learn more and uh, get inspired even yeah. more. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I guess I'm next. And mine starts with an E as well. It was a recommendation. Um, I, I received an email after last Monday night. And so I, I said, yeah, let's do it. Uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Aquitaine. So. Aquitaine. Aquitaine. Um, she was born in 1122. Quite, quite some numbers oh. there, right? Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, she passed in, could that be right? 1204. Yeah. Yeah, she did live. She lived a long time for back then. So she, And so she passed in 1204. So again, another one we're um, bringing up through the Middle Ages. Um, Eleanor uh, um, was, was French. Um, she was uh, the Queen of France from 1137 to 1152 as the wife of King Louis VII. And then she was the Queen of England from 1154 to 1189 as the wife of Henry II. And Duchess of uh, Aquitaine in her own right from 1137 until her death, 1204. Um, as the heir of the house of, <laughs> of whatever rulers in the uh, southwestern France, she was one of the wealthiest and most powerful women in Western Europe during the High Middle Ages. Okay, wow. she was, yeah, she was a patron of literary literary 
figures such as these three people that I can't say. <laughs> if you really want to know, you can look them up, but apparently they were something. She led armies. Wow. Yep. Several times in her life and was a leader of the Second Crusade. Rock star here. Um, she, um, let's see. So her first marriage was annulled after how many years? And um, uh, because she couldn't produce, she wasn't producing sons. She had two daughters and they had been together um, Oh, in the 15 years, 15 years, she hadn't produced a son, but she had daughters. Um, so they were able to, uh, they annulled it. Crazy. Mm. Um, as soon as the annulment was granted, Eleanor became engaged to her third cousin, Henry Duke of Normandy. The couple married um May 18th, 1152, Henry and Eleanor became king and queen of England in 1154. They had five sons and three daughters. So to make that total, at least 10 children, she brought. So that alone, oh my gosh. <laughs> in that, those times, to birth that many times <sighs> and make it and survive. They make it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Eleanor became estranged, eventually became estranged with Henry. And so Henry imprisoned her, her the king, um, imprisoned her uh, in 1173 for supporting the revolt of their eldest son. That was, Henry was against him. His oldest son was against him. And pretty much I feel like a lot, Everybody was white. I think at this time, people wanted to get, were all against him. Anyway, uh, when her husband died, um, their third son, Richard I, ascended to the throne. Um, and so then, you know, she was released from this prison. Her prison wasn't like what you would think. She wasn't thrown in the dungeon or anything. She was just sequestered away in different mm -hmm. spots. They would move her, but she literally was kind of, locked to wherever she was. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Eleanor acted as a regent while Richard went on the third crusade. She lived well into the reign of her youngest son, John. So um, she, the fact that she had 10 children, <laughs> the fact that she led, um, she led crusades she led the army i mean um at her age they said they describe her uh when in her younger years as um very beautiful and um like beauty to behold like that type of thing right um they depicted her skin as dark um on her on, on her grave thing, um, but they they didn't they don't she was a Norseman they don't think that that was correct so I'm not sure uh, um, because other paintings uh, show her as um, looking more the the blonde Norseman type look to her um, but um, tall and um, um, strong, but not, you know what I mean? Thin, yep. thin but not, but strong. Mm -hmm. A woman. Mm -hmm. so, right. Queen of France, Queen of England, led the army, one of the richest women at the time or in the location. The most wealth, yep. Most wealthy powerful, children. wealthy. And um, she had 10 children, at least 10 children in her, come out of her body and survive that. Yeah. In those days. Yeah. This sounds like a pretty fierce woman, pretty tough, pretty resilient. Uh, absolutely. And that she continued to fight for what was right, even against yeah. her second husband, um, to bring in um, 
good change, not not his. I guess maybe he was a little bit more tyrannical or something. Anyway, um, she's lucky she wasn't beheaded, but they just imprisoned her. So, wow. ten children. <laughs> I can't get over that part. Anyway, uh, I I feel like for her to she had to have had a lot of wisdom yeah. and higher understanding yes and I, some type of connection there that she understood so a couple things i'm getting right away is that she this is um is it, she's like it's a lifetime i'm i'm in some ways i'm really proud of in some ways i was not very proud of some of the things that i did but it was it was the it was the position um she was in and also the times and and just things were just so so different and it's hard to to even uh, understand the mindset and the way things were but she really found a lot of she loved the battlefield is what she keeps saying. She loved the battlefield. She loved mm -hmm. strategy. She loved figuring things out. And she, she's, it was creativity for her. It really was, that was where she could like express creativity was on the battlefield. She loved it. <laughs> That's what she's saying. So, um, but like, like she said, it's, it was a, it was a, a there Different was a duality time. in this life. So some really things she was very, very proud of and some things that she's like, I, I, you know, I, it was just the times, it was the way it was. It was, it was, um, uh, but she loves, she, it was, and she's saying high, high, uh, she's showing me like a novel. She's like, it was high drama. It was a, it was an amazing, amazing life. Um, and, uh, 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 I think she's saying like a, um, like a never a dull moment kind of a story. It was yeah. it was very much a, a a life of action and movement and um, and strategy. Uh, strategy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting mediumship and higher knowledge, so I do think yeah. she was definitely yeah, I do uh, connect it. Definitely getting those downloads. <laughs> very, she was very regal and elegant. Um, despite being a you know in battle she's still very feminine if that's the word I'm yes use. Mm -hmm. yeah and graceful and very patient with those around her well <laughs> her family perhaps <laughs> like not someone who's crossing her but uh, i think she had a very um patient with her children She was queen. She was queen for one of the sons. Yes. Queen regent. Queen. Yes. Queen regent. So she was ruling until he became of age. Yeah. Eleanor acted as regent while Richard went on the third crusade and she lived well into the reign of her youngest son, John. Yes. Um, so somebody's asking, I, I get the feeling she's not here right now, but she has been back many times. Somebody was just asking that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I was just asking her that question, but I okay. feel like she's not here now, but she's been back many times. Yes. Uh. She felt very very, very responsible for the people. Yeah. Um, and she shows herself as a lion when it came to her children. strategist I 
She did have a very soft side to her, Andrea. I think, it, did you say that? I think, yeah, I, I feel that, that's, I can sense that. She's showing me this very tender, loving, under, like this, like you, you wouldn't expect this uh, with all that she had to do and the power yeah. she was given. Yeah. There's this tenderness to her. Yeah. I didn't expect that. That's what I'm, that's what I was sensing. I think she was fair. Letting us know that all that glitters isn't gold. So just because you're the queen or whatever, it's not necessarily, especially when your husband can lock you away for years, you know. Right. Um, don't, don't always know what someone else is going through, even if it looks nice on the outside, right? But she is very, um, another woman, like a, uh, uh, someone you want to look up or emulate what I can't role model or, or whatever, especially for women at that time, because mm -hmm. I, is it, you're talking 1100 and something. Yeah. How many women were filthy rich and queen twice and, and yet went on the battlefield. So that, that's what's so interesting about her. She could have probably had this very fluffy sort of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She got in there. She calculated. She wanted to win for her countries. Yeah, pioneer, Connie. Um, she also brings in the sense of... Uh, uh, Deep aloneness or feeling very alone, even though she, I mean, she had her children and like that, but there was times of deep melancholy with her, but she overcame those times, of course, but she's showing me that she had those times as well. Um, that feeling lonely, <laughs> uh, even though you're surrounded by servants or you're surrounded by your family or whatever, she didn't have something about feeling very alone and isolated. Isol it, oh, it could have been isolated, yeah. That mm -hmm. isolation, isolated. But she was very determined. She knew that she was given this and that she needed to do it well. She said that she loved Henry. There was love at the beginning, you know, at the beginning. There is love. Which is rare, she said. It was for the time. <laughs> I asked her advice for women today. Show the world the real you. Hey. Mm. Be you. Embrace you. Show who you really are. And that looks like a very strong woman there. So she wasn't afraid to show that she was strong and smart and calculating and, you know, loving and everything. She was every, you know, and she portrayed that. She didn't hide mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us often can hide who we really are, try to be something you want other people want, think you think other people want you to be. She's telling you, nope, either really you. Let the world see you. And I, when I, I was asking her the same question, Andrew, what, what, oh. what for women today? And and it's it's very simple. It's very. Um, I think it's just uh, exactly that. But I also think it's a little bit. She feels like women today kind of have to, or the or they, they are made to feel like they have to pick just like one thing or two things that they do. And she's saying, use all of your talents. Use 
all of your traits because you come in with so many and you don't, um, she just feels like people today, they don't draw, life itself doesn't force us to draw on all of them in the same way. So she's saying, just do it. Just find those things, try everything. You know, she's, uh, she's just like anything that is interesting or, or um, makes you, um, gives you a thrill and uh, that you are, um, I can't find the word, but it's something like a thrill or excitement. Try it, do it, just do it. Um, because people are not using all of the the traits and talents and things that they have. They, they have so many things um, and women need to do that more. So it, it is like that, Andrew, exactly that. Be, yeah. Show your full self, but find, you know, dig deep and find out who you are and, and, and the things you love and the things you enjoy and, and dig in basically. Um, pull it all out of you. The, we've got a lot of stuff that we're not using, apparently. <laughs> so that's, at least that's what she feels, that we're not using a lot of the things that we are yeah. we are born with. And, and we could do so, so much, much more. We have so much to us as, as women. And she's bringing in with that as well. Remember that, um, remember you're all valued. Mm -hmm. Remember your value. You don't have to be a queen to be, to have value. Amen to that. Amen. <laughs> like, I don't want to be a queen really. And I, I agree with you guys. There's a, there's a softness to her, but there's a, there's a, it isn't masculine, but it's, it's, there's a solidness to her. There's a, a, a very, um, you know, I would imagine she maybe was very stubborn or something, but there's, there's a solidness there that she knows exactly who she is. She knows exactly she, she had that, um, whatever that core is that, that gives you that kind of self, self-esteem and self-confidence, knowing exactly who you are. She had that. Yeah. And she's linking that to, um, Joan of Arc, that same oh. thing. She said that, that same thing is, she keeps bringing in Joan of Arc. Um, Interesting. I, I don't know. The time, the time. I mean, I don't remember when Joan of Arc was here, but um, and how she would. I mean, obviously, when you're on the other side, you have knowledge of everything, right? She, right. She's helped to help us understand her drive, and um, like what you're just saying, Kim. Mm -hmm. That's what um, she's linking it. So how we understand Joan of Arc and the drive in her. Right. Same. Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And that also brings in that spiritual connection because we know that Joan of Arc was connected spiritually. Right. Exactly. And I also don't know of any other women in the battlefield, really. I don't know too many names right. Right, way back. Yeah. So yeah. they were both warriors on the battlefield, which would have yeah. been crazy back then. I'd be crazy now. But back then, you're, what you, you know, in your corset, in your what, you, know, <laughs> you don't have the modern things you need as a woman. Back right there. You know right, what right. Saying? And what? <laughs> what? Yeah. She loved horses too. She keeps showing me horses. So there's something about horses that she loved. Mm. Just an aside. <laughs> just I love it. There. <laughs> it, it just brings, she's showing me it, it's horses. letting you, the, you know. That, that realness of her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very lovely, lovely, confident energy. Yeah. Very calm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good. Yeah. Good pick, Debbie. Yeah. Thank you, Eleanor of A A Aquitaine. Is that right? Aquitaine? Aquitaine. Aquitaine. Yeah. Eleanor. Yeah. 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 She, Amazing. <clears throat> yep. All right. Stay the course. She, 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 she <laughs> it up. Stay the course. Stay the course. No matter if you're betrayed in your life, no matter if you have all these challenges, stay the course. Okay. Know your value. Keep. Yeah. Anyways. That is actually, that's a perfect. Um, yeah. Throw, throw line to the, our next um, person. Cause I feel like this is uh, one of those, again, a, a, a fierce energy here today, but here, here, here on earth today. So um, my pick is 
Ah, I picked Emma Gonzalez, one of the Parkland kids. She now wants to be called X. Again, another another person that knows exactly who they are. Um, so Emma, and this, I'm just gonna um, start this by saying that this may be a confusing one for me or because of my old brain, um, <laughs> but she wants to be, she, call, use the pronoun they and them. Um, so that's what I will be using. Um, oops, that's what I'll be using, but um, uh, so I've written it down like word for word so that I, I that that's one that's hard for me when it's a singular person, it's hard for me to remember they and them. So I, I, if I slip up, I'm just apologizing in advance because it's just my, just my old brain. Okay. So, um, X Gonzalez, um, is an American activist, um, who advocates for, uh, gun control, um, after, um, coming out as a uh, bisexual, she prefers the pronoun they and them. So they prefer to be they and them. Um, as a high school senior, they survived the February 2018 Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida. And in response to that, co-founded the gun control advocacy group, Never Again. Their parents are amazing too. <laughs> very, very supportive of X and uh, and who is now 21. Um, X's mom is a mathematician and their father is Cuban American and is a cybersecurity attorney. Hmm. They are now studying, um, X is now studying um, at the, uh, the New College of Florida and they love creative writing and astronomy. And I thought it would just be really interesting to see what is in store for, for X because um, so far their life has been absolutely, you know, um, uh, a force, you know, really a force in this um, difficult, difficult problem we have in the United States with, with guns. Um, and the other thing about X is that she's, they have um, been a, a really a, a big target for the right wing, cruel, mean, vicious attacks, um, being called a liar, crisis actor, just disgusting um, things. But so um, I'm sure has made X very strong and um, stronger because of that. Um, but it's, uh, it's, uh, they are um, considered also to be one of the most influential um, people of their generation. So this generation is gonna be something else, I think to see just already, you know, you can see these, these amazing um, stars. And when I was looking at um, X's information, that's what I saw was, a, a, hands taking a star out of the sky and placing it on earth. And I felt like it was a, a few things with that. I felt like it was like, they are a star, you know, they're, they, they stand out probably for their life for, for different reasons, but also that I, I felt like they are, and what was so interesting when they said they're in, interested in astronomy, because it, it, I also thought that, I felt like they were, um, this may be one, the, the first life or the only life um, that they've had on earth. I felt like they were from, like had spent time elsewhere in the, <clears throat> exactly, in, on other planets and things. I just felt like there is something that this is the first time or the first something. So there's something about that as well. Um, but that, that idea of being kind of plucked from the stars and brought here was intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. You guys in the chat too, if you get anything, any other um, feelings about that, let me know because um, it was a really powerful image and it came up right away as soon as I was looking at, at their information. So yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Impression. Yep. Wow. Uh, when I immediately, you know, when I tapped in over here, it, 
she immediately she's a revolutionary she's a um she's bringing in the revolution um and metaphorically or real i don't know but she's bringing in that revolution she's stepping i'm sorry they are bringing <laughs> sorry it's okay i know it's 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 hard um yeah, yeah i, I struggle with that one just for language purpose yeah they are bringing in the revolution Think of the bravery for a young woman or a young person to go through that and then stand up and fight against it. At the young age of what, 18, 19? Mm -hmm. 18, yeah, senior in yeah. high school. <clears throat> and to take on the, the industry yeah. that so many politicians, grown ass mm -hmm. adults are afraid to take on, to take, yeah. to just call it out say what it is, what's going on. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it does remind me of the, um, at the, uh, the, I guess it was the United Nations when um, Greta. young activists called out all those world leaders saying, what are you doing to the earth? You know, Greta Thunberg. Why? Greta, yeah, Greta Thunberg, exactly. Uh, yeah. Amazing. When I think of what, what I was like in, in when I was a senior in high school. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I was at the mall. That's basically what I did. So, but yeah, amazing, amazing. <laughs> funny how different we were. Mm -hmm. The times. I was a late bloomer. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. There's a tremendous sense of responsibility that she is. Sorry, they are carrying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Responsible the the understanding that if they don't make the change, who's going to? Mm. It's it it's a tremendous burden actually, but um, X is turning it around and trying to empower others to do it as well. Responsibility. Someone's got to be responsible. You know, it, it's, she is that she's, she, they are in the right position. Yeah. Um, they have the ability to see that bigger picture, the visionary and um, the strength to never give up and keep it moving forward. It's a, to to awesome leader of it and that's what i was seeing too that the leader she was they were leading this mm -hmm. revolution. sorry tremendous sorry. patience and a mentor so yeah. um what x is doing now like she's not sorry they're not going to stop um, X is going to continue to be this kind of person throughout their life and mentoring others exactly to step yeah. and and um, X understands that this is a marathon and not a sprint so not losing patience right away right mm -hmm. yeah that this will take time but not to give up and to stand up the responsibility and Born full of passion yeah. yep sorry Oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, I no, like the compassion. No, you go. Yeah. <laughs> I like that compassion. Now, ladies, <laughs> I like that compassion piece. I'm yeah, so and it's it's tremendous. And I, you know, I'm giving big props to X because wow, stand up, not back down. And I, it, as soon as you said that, Kim, about plucking from the star and bringing, mm -hmm. this felt exactly right. It just felt exactly right. Isn't that interesting. We're going to need to bring this one over here to yes. us, <laughs> right? Right. This Maybe. bright shining star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and so people are mentioning the third wave of volunteers. 
Um, and I, I'm wondering that as well. I was thinking about that. I'm like, I wonder if um, they could be one of those volunteers that uh, Dolores Cannon talks about, three, oh, the three oh, waves of volunteers. Oh, I, get, I get chills with that. I know me yeah. too. So I'm wondering if that is, is, is what that is. Um, very good chat. <laughs> very good. Because um, very, very good. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and I have the, the, the three, three cards of visionary for her. Look at this. I have the high priestess, the king of wands, and then that three of wands, which is that, I'm sorry, that, that visionary piece. Mm -hmm. Born leader. They are a born leader. So very strong cards for yeah. X. I, I keep uh, seeing X in front of um, Congress. So uh, I have a feeling something may happen with, a, I don't know, a bill they're part of or something, the Parkland kids, you know, that, that uh, her uh, uh, activist group, um, something like that, because I keep seeing that. So they must be going before Congress for something at some point, and they look like they do now. So. I feel like it's soon, it, maybe in the next, you know, year or two or something. Um, <clears throat> yeah. They are, X is not going to back down until mm -hmm. they get what they want. And uh, get pull it into calmer waters there. Right. So they have a big road ahead of them and thankfully x is very patient because it they know i mean with that high priestess too we're also getting right. that that knowing and writing something i feel like they're going to write something for um it almost feels like the kind of the um like like uh the teen audience kind of, um, I feel like they're going to write something of books that, and I feel like it's like uh, um, about um, people that are kind of outside the norm, something about that, um, being kind of outsiders and outside the norm. Mm. Um, it, it, it feels like a series. It feels like a series of books, but I feel like it will be really popular. Like it will be like that generation is really affected by it, um, you know, Kind of like you know Harry Potter or those you know those those, oh, those yeah, things yeah. that we think of as being very influential. It feels like that. It feels like it's something like that. Um, that feels like it's later, but it does feel like that's to empower uh, one of the reasons that that they're here. Actually, it feels like because it feels like it's going to influence like over and over, it will influence over and over and over again the kids of that when they are those ages. They'll they'll read those books and um, yeah, anyway keeps the empowerment going. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I see eventually at some point, someone lands on the right side with X and helps with this, um, I don't know if it's a gun ban or gun laws or something. Mm -hmm. It takes a while, but it gets there. <sighs> I can just see the frustration here. Mm. And these mm -hmm. false, these false people in government who are letting things happen, right? Right, right. They're not living in the truth. They're just being bought and sold, or whatever it may be, for entertainment purposes only. But I do see at some point, um, her being supported in this by the right people that can make change. Right. Right. It eventually does come. And it's such, it is, it's such a battle. Um, yeah. And, and, and that may be the, one of the through lines for these three ladies, because they all were on the battlefield, all Ooh. battling, battling, you know, um, in their time, in their, in their own way. Um, but it is, it's, it's, it's a hard, um, fight in this country for, you know, about guns. It's just one of those things that we just cannot seem to get, 
you know, a handle on and it will happen. I agree with you, Andrea, it's going to happen. It's just, it's going to take some time and the right people are getting, right. getting together and doing it. Yeah. Yeah. David Hogg too. His, um, he's amazing as well. Amazing guy. I, I, I just, I, I love the messages coming through today as far as um, the connecting, the connections. Uh, I mean, how everything is connected. I feel like every single one of these um, beautiful people bring in messages of connection. Uh, con connecting with the higher self or the higher right. knowing. Um, every single one of them, right? Mm -hmm. and um how when you have that that connection and you're aligned things happen yeah. uh, things get done right and right. um we're not alone I, I know that um the queen said that she had she does go through those t she did go through those times of melancholy and feeling very alone mm -hmm. um but we're not alone we're always connected Right. To source. Um, and so, yeah. And together we can. <laughs> That's together, right. Together That's right. So. Um, and, and each of these women were, were and are trying to take care of other people. Mm. Right. They were. Right. Trying to help the masses. Right. X is currently now the other mm -hmm. two in the past. Right. Um, one for country and one is a nurse, you know, one is the queen. Or, and on that. I always feel if you're trying to do the right thing for a lot of people, things will fall into place, right? Mm -hmm. If, you know, if you're true of heart and trying to do the, and I feel the, each of these three that we're reading on tonight, that was in their heart was what, what is the best for everyone? Right. Right. And taking on that kind of responsibility with, yeah. you know, when they really didn't have the, none of them yeah. have to, they just do it because they, they feel like that's, that's what they need to do. And um, we have such a, a problem right now in, at least in the, in the United States with people wanting to avoid responsibility, not take responsibility at all, at all costs. Don't, don't blame me. And here are these, these um, very, you know, amazing, amazing um, three individuals that are, clearly just strong and and willing to take it on yeah yeah it's amazing yeah well good 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 on us ladies <laughs> good on all of us everyone I, in the gym I, like, I, yeah. I, I do like i do like this group after um our last tuesday uh, uh not last when did, when was the women's march on on saturday on saturday so mm -hmm. um to carry it forward yeah. after um, the Women's March and, and getting out there and, and making movement. I do like these three. Yes, uh, yes. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was Saturday. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Kim. Blessings so much. So where, where are we next week? Is it? Uh, we're over here at my house. Oh, yeah, like a lantern. We're going to Andrea's. We're going to my house. We're so going to Andrea's. Lilac Lantern Tarot next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, where you'll hear us read on three more amazing individuals. Thank you. And Andrea, congratulations again on your cards. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm excited to show them. It's, show it's them. okay. Because I'm, I'm about to plug us as well. Because yep. Debbie and I have a class coming up, so yeah, sign I up if you haven't signed up. And there's there's Andrea's cards. Andrea's well, card. Andrea. <laughs> so grab those cards, and there's I think on your um, community page it shows it gives a link to where they can yeah. get those cards. Yeah. And I know mine are in the mail. I keep being told they're almost oh. here. So yay! <laughs> and um, yeah, Kim ordered some too. So. Mm -hmm. We may have to just party with those cards one night. I to say, yeah, let's have a card party. And yes, our the mediumship um, course is uh, the, the Tuesday is filling up. There, I don't even know if there's there may be one spot. I'm not. I was just going to look before getting on. I I feel like because I saw someone just as we were on. 
Right. Might might have taken the last Tuesday uh, spot, but you can check. But Saturday there is opening. So it's the same class. It's it's just coinciding with each other on Tuesday. And we wanted to offer it on Saturday for those who work and can't make a Tuesday up Tuesday morning afternoon-ish class. So please please check that out because we start next Tuesday. Yeah, I'm so excited. And, so and we start next Tuesday and next Saturday. So yes. um, please check that out. Uh, don't want to miss miss that. Yay. Yay. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you again to Lucien and, and Bonds for, for holding down the chat yesterday. And I guess you're doing it today. <laughs> I didn't ask you to, but you're just doing it. So that's great. Thank you so much. I All right, everybody. You. See you later. Good night. Thank you. Bye.